Fala pessoal, aqui quem fala é Diogo Band da Noma de Mídia, com um imenso prazer hoje de trazer um convidado super especial. Então esse podcast vai ser um pouquinho diferente, eu trouxe para conversar hoje com a gente ninguém mais, ninguém menos do que James Swadlow. Eu vou dizer para vocês aí quem é esse cara que eu tô mega empolgado em trazer para essa conversa. E dizendo que vai ser um pouquinho diferente, porque essa conversa vai ser em inglês, porque ele vem direto do Reino Unido. Mas pessoal, James Wadlow é o cofundador da Impossible Brief, um estúdio multidisciplinar de design e produção base que tem como sua sede Londres. O James tem grande experiência em design gráfico, começando como freelancer e depois é, indo para trabalhos, tanto quanto diretor quanto é, com motion graphic. Bom, é, o trabalho dele é muito bem reconhecido na indústria da música, como vocês vão ver, e ele é responsável por trabalhos incríveis como diretor de grandes peças, como o trabalho do lyric video de Just Like This, by the Chainsmokers and Coldplay, Setting Fire, by the Chainsmokers Fit Silo, Roses, by the Chainsmokers Fit Roses. E mais recentemente, Me Enamorei da Shakira. Então, esse é o pequeno resumo. And now, switching to English, I'm already saying I'm sorry for my English and for my accent. And, uh, James, thank you so much for accepting my invitation. It means a lot for me to, to talk with somebody with such a huge experience and with such huge results in the music industry. So, thank you so much for being here. No, man, I'm glad to do it, 100%. Awesome. So, uh, first of all, what I think it's the, 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 what we can do to paint a background and everybody will love to hear is how you got into the graphic design industry and mixed with music, how those two merge together and how do you got into this? Yeah, so um, I've been a graphic designer for like 15 years now. Um, I actually got into graphic design. I studied uh, video game design mm. so um, at awesome. university. Um, but I wasn't so much into like the video game part. I like gravitated more towards the, uh, the graphic side of it. So I actually left university and taught myself through YouTube, you know, just watching like videos, awesome. videos, videos. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh, yeah, I left um, like my university uh, the year before we were meant to finish. Um, and then just taught myself through YouTube. Uh, and back then it was a lot harder to learn because mm. like nowadays there's so many YouTube channels. Yes, there's a uh, lot of information nowadays. Exactly, but like 15 years ago it wasn't so much the case, so it was a lot harder. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of like taught myself that way and then I got a job here in London um, almost exactly 10 years ago, uh, just before I turned 25. And I came down to London to get the job. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked in a design agency for two years, uh, but it was more like advertising, like mm. beer, you know, beer brands and that kind yes. of stuff. Um, and then I went freelance and then ended up um, just being spotted by the chain smokers when I was freelance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how all the music stuff started through the oh. chain smokers. And then like we got more clients through. Wow, that. that's a great start. <laughs> <laughs> by yeah. being watched by the chain smokers and then starting the music industry like wow that's amazing that's yeah super i cool. got really lucky i got really lucky you you yeah. think it was lucky or i, I yeah, don't yeah, I, yeah, actually absolutely. i don't believe that much in lucky i believe that you were doing a very great job and they watched what you were doing and then there's something innovative and then they were like yeah we need mm -hmm. to work with this guy uh i agree with you to a point But like, I know for a fact, there's so many talented artists out there right now that haven't been spotted yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they just need to be in the right place at the right time. Yes. Like either they get retweeted by someone I follow or mm -hmm. like that a musician follows. And then you see their work and you're like, oh, this guy's really good. Yes. Uh, let's give them work. So like, I do believe there's that element of luck involved. Yeah. Okay. You got a point. So uh, you said that you were contacted by the Chainsmokers and that was your first experience in the music mm -hmm. industry. So um, how did that contact happen? How is that? Uh, how does that happen? And as I see that you already done a lot of work for the Chainsmokers and now for Shakira and for other artists as well, uh, 
do you do you see any similarities on in what artists are asking for in design because one of the things that i think today we are in an extremely visual society uh, especially on the internet like there is that that quote that is super famous that one image worth more than a thousand words So now we are watching artists such as Billie Eilish and those other artists that are extremely visually based. They have a strong visual aspect. So do you do you notice any similarities on the artists in what they are demanding and what they are asking for and how that contact happened with you? Um, yeah, so I, I, I think things have changed a lot. Like when uh, we met the chain smokers, it must have been like five five years ago now we started working with them and uh back then we were just doing the artwork for them and i think that especially during the lockdown things have changed because when uh you know covid struck and hit the world like we were meant to be doing a lot of graphics for artists that were meant to go touring mm -hmm. um and then all those jobs got cancelled yes so, so we, we had like one or two months where it was very quiet and then i think like slowly the industry is kind of like adapting to the fact that um this is going to be the state of play for a while mm -hmm. y you know i mean yes. like the virus the virus is not going away for yes. a long time unfortunately so they, exactly and but they have to adapt their content to kind of like match that so the last thing we did for coldplay um purely came about because of the virus because they were meant to play a uh, a show for iheart radio in las vegas mm -hmm. um so they were meant to Uh, play a concert and obviously they couldn't so instead um, iHeartRadio you know gave them a budget to kind of like shoot something from home mm -hmm. you know like safely so that's a job that would have never come about had it not been for the virus mm -hmm. so at the moment we're kind of like learning to adapt and um, move with the way the industry is kind of changing a bit and obviously no one knows when bands are going to be able to go out and tour again mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I think The estimations of next summer are pretty, um, you know, like I, I'm not sure that next summer is going to be. I, I think it's too early. Basically. Yeah, like me too. Yeah, at yeah. least uh, if there's not a vaccine that really works, things are going to be like not yeah, so exactly. safe. For, exactly. For me, for, for me myself, I'm not going out at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like until there's a global vaccine. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that we're ever going to get back to a state where, uh -huh. like, um, we're always going to be in like, oh, like the uh, you know, like the virus has gone down, the virus has gone up, the yes. virus has gone yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. We're we're, we're going to be constantly like yo-yoing until yes. there's like a definitive vaccine. So that's true. Uh, yeah, we're we're learning to adapt with that, and like there's work that's coming because of it. But um, I think a lot of the record labels are kind of like learning to roll with it now. Mm -hmm. And kind of like just um, just kind of like adapt to the fact that like it might be this way for a while. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I think is uh, is super important for us to uh, highlight a little bit, I think, mm -hmm. it's that um, you're you're saying the industry is adapting. Yes, as here in Brazil is the same. Uh, the artists are doing a lot of live videos and live stream, but it's kind of getting a little bit saturated. And in the internet, there is a huge competition for your attention everywhere. Like, and when we are, we are talking about graphic design and yeah. graphic and, and visual, like visual mm -hmm. in all senses, um, what do you think that is, is going to be used for call the attention of the fans now? Like, The, the visual from the just like this by the chain smoker is amazing it's like uh it's kind of uh, an imagination a dream and uh, the concept is of a, a, a boy dreaming isn't it and yeah, uh, exactly. and uh, the, the 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 design is amazing and the visual is amazing and it had a huge uh result on youtube but now since the since Everyone is doing something on the internet right now. Huge artists and small artists. What do you think is the main aspect that can call the attention of the fans now for they to look at the artist and stay focused and interact or something like that? I mean, um, 
from from our point of view, like uh, we've been working mostly with the like Coldplay recently, mm-hmm. and one thing we found. So obviously they were meant to do this concert, and uh, I watched a lot of um, performances that other bands have done, you know, during the lockdown. And it's very much been like a Zoom call, you know, like mm-hmm. yeah. this person here, this person here, this person here. So um, the first thing we wanted to do when, when we spoke to the band is they wanted to make it feel like you were at a concert, right? Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. So like what we did is we shot it in a way that we could, um, we desaturated, made it black and white, but then we added lots of colors because to me, like when you're at a concert and there's like the flashing lights, mm-hmm you know they they turn the band kind of like these like crazy colors like pink and Mm -hmm. green and everything and so um what we did with the graphics was really kind of saturate the colors and make it so that they were very silhouetted a lot of the time awesome and so so that kind of to me almost simulated um like a festival or live show environment Uh uh-huh even even though they were like you know clearly at their house and and Mm -hmm. everything else and I think at the moment, a lot of bands are coming to the conclusion that they need to maybe not just do a Zoom call where they're just sitting there and singing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like there is still scope for people to be creative, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, which is what we tried to do with um, the last Coldplay performance. So we tried to make it like, you know, like we, we did like uh, scribble graphics on them and kind of like made the colors really vibrant and pulse to the music and stuff. And so we're, we're, we're kind of like doing our best to make it exciting even though it was like a, a performance from home uh-huh and it's super cool because that a lot of colors and lights and flashes it's the concept of Coldplay. they have yeah. that concept like really attached to them since mm-hmm. always i am a huge yeah. fan of Coldplay. actually yeah. i knew Coldplay in 2009 when i was in new zealand i can remember like it was yesterday i was in a bus in new zealand and i was listening to speed of light And I was like, oh, nice. wow, that band is amazing. And then yeah. since then, I'm, I'm a huge fan because they are doing something so new to music, like mixing a little bit of electronic music with pop music and with visuals. They have it all. I'm a huge mm-hmm. fan. So that's just, yeah, <laughs> that's just it's really interesting. It's a really interesting first song because usually people go like, oh, yellow or like, You know, I mean, the scientist. Or, mm-hmm. So, like, Speed of Light is actually a very interesting first song. To yes. To the band. Yes. That that must be like awesome to work with Coldplay. It must be a yeah, a, they're, a they're, crazy, they're super a crazy and creative experience all the time. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. They're, uh, they're really nice. So, uh, coming back a little bit for the Chainsmokers, and I I need to highlight this that the the lyric video from Just Like This of the Chainsmoker amassed over 1.6 billion streams on YouTube, surpassing Justin Bieber. The last time I checked, it was 1.8 billion for yep. something okay. just like this. Yep. What do you think, what factors and aspects of the visual content you think uh, that made the lyric video uh, have this great result? Um, I, I mean, I, I think there's a few things like for a video to be popular. First of all, like the song has to be good. Right? Yes. Just like, yes. Um, and also you're bringing together two huge fan bases, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you have like the Chainsmokers and Coldplay, right? Yes. So it's kind of like, um, like you, you bring those together and you already have a massive audience. Mm-hmm. And the way they released it, they performed it live at the Brit Awards, mm-hmm. which is like a huge award show here. So, um, There's those things, and then uh, the fact that they released the song and the video and everything straight after the Brit Awards performance, I think was really um, helpful. But I think more than anything, um, I think we, the thing is, we really didn't have like a lot of time to come up with that video. We did it, it in about- It was eight days, like, wasn't it? Something. Eight days, yeah. yes. Yeah. It was in your um, website. Yeah, so we did it in, Uh, eight days and we didn't have long to do it but so what i ended up doing was finding like a group of people that were a available because it's very hard to find like graphic artists who are available like you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um so i i needed to find people that were available and then what i did was um i was doing the master timeline and i was animating a lot of the shots myself but then i was just like um bringing people's work into 
the video um, onto my timeline. But more than anything, I think we tapped into something which is like when you're a kid and you have that imagination and, you know, you like to dream and you think you can do anything, you know, you, you think you can fly around the universe. And it, the whole idea around the video was that, like, um, it's just your imagination when you're a child and you're asleep. And the whole song is about heroes and, you know yes. what I mean? So I think we tapped into something that, like, a lot of people, you know, like, everyone has experienced that, you know, everyone wanted to be a superhero, everyone wanted to be Superman and at some point. So I think people really resonated with that. Um, and the other thing was that we drew it um, in the, the style that a child would draw it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, like, um, I don't know if you have... It's kids, kind of a board, like, not, isn't it? Like a, a drawing board of... Uh... Exactly. Yeah, so it's, you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like if you have kids, uh, I don't have kids, but you know what I mean? When you're a kid, you see them with the crayons, you know, yes. and they just draw. Yes. Um, and actually, I ended up um, ripping off the work of a lot of, like, kids on the internet. Mm -hmm. So I found, like, pictures that had been awesome. drawn by, like, like uh -huh. five or six-year-old kids, and uh -huh. then I was copying their work. Awesome. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because yes. I was like, like, right now, uh, as we are as adults, we don't see the world that children see the world, right? Yes. So like so children true. see the world differently. And so I, I I just, to get that sense of like the graphics and everything, that sense of wonder, we literally had to rip off the work of children mm -hmm. because there's only a child that would draw like a triangle and write rocket on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. To make a rocket. Whereas mm -hmm. now like we try and draw a proper rocket. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, I told everyone to kind of do that and just kind of like tap into that sense of like being a kid again yes i think you tapped into a kind of a nostalgia like yeah. when we are grown-ups and we remember the good old days when everything was just fine and we could like draw everything exactly. and we were chilled we didn't, and didn't no have taxes didn't have bills didn't have taxes <laughs> didn't have covid didn't have government exactly. didn't... <laughs> yeah 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 all you had to all you were wondering about is like when your next meal is coming yeah. <laughs> the good old days yeah yeah <laughs> That's yeah, so cool. Exactly. But um, I think like one, I already, I was kind of uh, already uh, seeing that the Chainsmokers was going to to approach the Coldplay or something like this as mm -hmm. uh, I was, if, if Avicii was still alive today, mm -hmm. I think they would do like a lot of collabs and something like this because they have similar fan bases, they have similar yeah. visual concepts, similar message to the public of hope and, and enjoying life and I don't know, mm -hmm. something um, light, like being... Yeah, yeah. Being... It's, it's not heavy. It's yes, like, uh, you yes. Know. Yeah, it's filled and, up, filled and one thing that I'm seeing that is kind of viral today is works of art and design and visual that they have a lot of this concept of nostalgia, saturation in color, and uh, a lot of um, neon stuff, like the vapor wave is super yeah. in fashion today. And I think those kind of visuals, they are like appealing to everybody because of the nostalgia and because of the brightness. I don't know, I, I, I could be Mm -hmm. saying some bullshit but do you no, think no, that no, it's okay right. it, it is something like this yeah yeah but i i also think it's the same with music that things come in waves so mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh you know like house will make a resurgence and then dubstep will be popular and then you know what i mean and then yes. it kind of goes every five years it's kind of cyclical you know what i mean and then house will be popular again like in five years during mm -hmm. the summer and dubstep then you know what i mean it's kind yes, of like it's cyclical and they, yeah and so like there's and i think it's the same with graphics there's definitely in the graphic industry you see trends mm -hmm. like uh like you said the vaporwave stuff has definitely made a resurgence i think um you know when films like drive you know and and those kind of films really brought back that retro aesthetic and you know like since Instagram was made, you know, Instagram has been trying to imitate like, um, you know, faded effects and filtered. Mm -hmm. Polaroid like when... stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So like there's always been this constant longing for wanting to go back to an age where things were like more analog, you mm -hmm. know, and less digital. 
Um, and I, I'm not quite sure what that is. I don't know if it's kind of like this simpler time mentality, mm -hmm. but um, we've got to the point where our phones now and everything is so sharp and in focus and it's nice to kind of go back to an age where things were a bit simpler and you know what I mean? And I think there's a warmth and a fam familiarity to those kind of uh, photos and graphics that we mm. connect with, you know, like mm. when we see them. Uh, there is a, a study actually that um, I think, oh, I forgot the, no the name of the agency, but there's a study that I think you're gonna find it interesting because it uh, talks a little bit with the concept of the lyric video that they formulate a concept called nostalgia. It's okay. It's uh, something, maybe later I can show you something about it or something. It's the nostalgia is the concept of doing something new with uh, kind of uh, uh, looking like it was old things reformulated for the new. Um, I don't know how to give any example in um, in UK, but here in Brazil, there is a, a show of uh, an old lady that is cooking on TV, and she's called Palmirinha, and she's a really old woman and looking like your grandmother, and is doing a huge success because she's she's cooking like your grandmother used to cook but she's talking about issues of nowadays, like veganism and uh, eating healthy and stuff like that. So that's the concept of nostalgia. And they are saying that this is super in trend because it's like, it's, it's uh, of today, but it reminds us of a time where we didn't have preoccupations and we didn't have stuff like that. So uh, they are watching this trend gets uh, even more strong nowadays and because of this maybe because we are living in a world that's super chaotic now and people are trying to hold to things in the past that were good and bring them good memories so yeah. i think tapping into those things one of my clients tap in one of those things a lot because he have a 90s concept he loves stranger things and video games cool. and stuff and stuff like that and he brings that kind of nostalgia for nowadays so i think um one of the things that is, is, is good to work today is that uh, trying to bring that, um, that, that old feeling of everything is fine and everything will be okay. So that's the concept of nostalgia. And w one of the things that I think that the, this lyric video from the Chainsmokers tapped into strongly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I, I, like I said, I, I don't really know why it connected as well like i said i think it was a perfect storm of having two huge fan bases and the song was really catchy all the radio stations were playing it and then like i said we we managed to tap into that feeling of being a kid again and even though the world wasn't as messed up as it is now mm -hmm. there's still you know what i mean like like you said there, there's no easier time in your life than when you're a kid because yes you don't have anything to worry about Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you, you don't have any of the stuff that we grown-ups have to worry about. So I think people um, enjoyed that. And then also, I think people um, who have children, their children enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yes. um, in the modern, like, music, uh, you know, industry, there's a lot of sex and kind of like, <sighs> right, sex, money, yes. you know what I mean? And so yes. it, was, it was a very wholesome video. Mm -hmm. uh, that parents could watch with their children, even yes. if they're like three or four, you know what I mean? A uh, family it's experience. Like yeah. Awesome. That, I, I, like, I didn't think, of, I didn't thought of that when I saw it. It's, um, it's amazing to think in that way. It's, mm. It makes perfect sense. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Like we had, we, we had um, like one father who uh, his son was obsessed with the video, so he wanted to paint his son's um, like room um, yes. with the graphics from the video so like we we got some like high red stills and we sent them to awesome. him and then he he painted like his son's room you know what i mean with the uh -huh. superhero yes and everything. yes I, and now that was like amazing you know what i mean like it's that, so rewarding when you see stuff yeah like that. that's like you you can see in the real world something you imagine and put a lot of work and you see someone doing it in the real world it's like wow it must be super rewarding yeah, because you never you never think it's gonna 
like when you're doing these jobs you never realize the impact it might have on someone's life mm -hmm. you know what i mean and, you, you um, didn't you didn't you, no. you you were you were not expecting that huge result no no because like it happened so quick Uh -huh. you know what I mean like we got the job but then it's like, you, you, okay, you we, didn't we even have the time it. to realize that you were doing no 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 we didn't <laughs> didn't have the time to process it uh -huh. like, you know what I mean like like eight days late it's finished and then um the chain smokers actually came to London I believe uh the week after because they played the Brit Awards and then they played the Rams House here in Camden mm -hmm. and you know like literally a few days after we'd finished the video we were watching them play with like the graphics on the screen Wow. So it all happened so quick, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, I don't think any of the people uh, that we worked with on the video, like any of my team, really ever had the time to uh, process like mm -hmm. the impact it was going to have. And none of us could have predicted as well like how massive it was going to be. Awesome. And it was. And it still is. Super. Yeah, yeah. It's it's still I still is, get like, messages still, about it. I, I, I hear the song all the time. And it's super funny because... At first, when I heard the song, at first I was like, hmm, that song is different from what I was expecting. Then I heard again and again and again. And when, I, I don't know, I think at the fifth time I was like, okay, I'm addicted to this song now. <laughs> I need to stop because it's so catchy. So, so yeah. catchy. And because yeah. it talks about uh, not like a super, super hero, but a normal person superhero, which is amazing, which is mm. super, super cool. It's, it's, more, it's more about like when you're a normal person and you read about superheroes and yeah. then it's more about believing you can be like them not yes. like actually being like them mm -hmm. it's more about the thought and the thought process like, i mean i don't know like but uh to me anyway uh, it's more about the thought process of like the fact you could be a hero yes or like you admire these heroes but like and in your head you are these but like you know you're not really It's so cool because your interpretation of that song was so amazing in the graphics. And but when you when you when you received the the, the job and then when you were contacted, did they uh, did they w specify like we want this this and that, or they leave it open for your interpretation and do? Uh, no. So we we did um, we did the artwork first. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't expecting to you know like we weren't expecting to do the lyric video mm -hmm. like that was a surprise to us. Um, so I was in LA, I was staying actually with Alex from the Chainsmokers, like I went to see them, I think just before Christmas, they played a huge show at the Staples Center mm -hmm. in LA. So like I went and stayed with Alex and, you know, I went to see the show and stuff and it was awesome. And then I came back and just straight away after like New Year's Eve, like maybe the second of January, like. Uh, Lev, who's my partner and myself, we got, um, I mean, I'd already spoken to Alex about it, but he's like, we've got the song with Coldplay coming out. And then we also had to get the um, artwork for the album ready, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to run those two jobs concurrently, like at the same time. And we, act we actually ended up shooting uh, the child who's on the front cover. Mm -hmm. um, and Uh, the artwork for the front of their album as well on the same day in the same studio because we had to do them at the same time. Wow. Because, like, the label wanted the artwork for the Coldplay single, but they also wanted the album artwork. Mm -hmm. Almost, like, on the 6th or 7th of January. You know wow. What I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. So we came straight off. We came straight off New Year's Eve, and um, we had to... I mean, there's a video on our website somewhere, like, behind the scenes, and you can see, like how we shot the kids on like trampoline but also uh -huh. behind behind us we were building the room that ended up being uh -huh. like the the room on the front of the artwork so yeah it was a bit mad awesome i'll be i'll be tagging your website your social media in the podcast no worries everybody will be able to see Thank everything you. and no no you they they have to see how this was done and i saw that you made the um, The design, the new design of the chain smokers as well. That the the it's kind is for me. It's kind of an a uh, kind of Japanese letter like the T and the C and the S. I don't know. Yeah. I I thought when the when I first saw that uh, when they released the, that new identity. Do you know the identity that I'm talking about? 
Yeah, said, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the logo. Yeah, so yeah. The, the new logo. I thought that they were trying to connect more with Asia and something like that. What is was that on purpose or is something out of my mind? Uh, no, like, uh, so I work with my partner Lev. Yes. And he, he's like awesome at branding logos mm -hmm. and everything. So like, I admittedly, I'm not great at logos mm -hmm. and branding. So uh, that's why we work really well together. So he did all the logo and branding stuff and he did a load of stuff that um, even his logos that they didn't like ended up on merchandise because mm -hmm. they're like, this is still really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't believe there was any uh, kind of like incline towards making um, a logo that would work better with Asia. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't believe that was the case. It's oh, just okay. that that's just how it ended up. But yeah, um, but yeah no, like um, I, I don't think that was the case. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, when we were talking uh, uh, before a little bit about the concept of the artist and how Coldplay and chain, the chain smokers they use a lot of a lot of, a lot of colors. Uh, Coldplay a little bit more. Uh, yes. The chain smokers they use kind of sepia things and faded things in some yeah. in some mm -hmm. arts. Um, how do you think an artist that is in the beginning or in the uh, the first stages of his career, how can they watch themselves themselves and uh, start to think about their visual concept? How they build that concept and how they think about the universe that they are trying to to build for their fans and show mm. to them. I mean, um, like obviously, like graphic designers are very wide spectrum mm -hmm. right it's like um like i said admittedly i'm not great at like branding and stuff fortunately um my partner is amazing at that kind of stuff um so he uh, but like when we sit down and we think about the brand we think about um not just like the reason we built our agencies we wanted to be an agency where um a musician or artist could come to us and we would take care of everything, right? Awesome. That was, that was uh, I don't know if there's many agencies out there because a lot of artists, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I like this photographer, so I'll get him to do like a photo for my new single. Mm -hmm. And then, but like they'll have uh, this agency which is doing all their graphic content for their tour. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have this director doing their music video. So it's kind of like a bit all over the place. And yeah. then that kind of like- Kind of um, crazy. Exactly, yeah. And it, <laughs> It leads to kind of um, disconnected brands. So mm -hmm. when we started um, Impossible Brief, like the whole idea was to be a, like all in one agency where mm -hmm. we would take care of everything. Mm -hmm. So from branding and we'll do your artwork and we can do your visuals and we can do your music videos. And, you know, like if an artist would trust us with all those things, you know, um, we can take care of them. So I think like in terms of answering your question, like, Lev and myself, when we get, and we're working with an artist right now who are like just starting out, who mm -hmm. I can't speak about, but like we're doing a project at the moment where we're controlling absolutely everything for the first time. Press shots, um, artwork, uh, visuals, you know, like everything, mm -hmm. which is really like awesome and fun. And that's always like what uh, we intended to do with the company. So it's really nice when you get given control of the whole brand. Mm -hmm. because like you can make everything like seem connected and yes. like link and cohesive you know yes. and in terms of like starting out and thinking about those things it's like it's you know like it's a big job mm -hmm. you know i mean yes. there's, there's a re yes. there's a re there's a reason why not many agencies Do i that, mean yeah yeah because it's a very big job you know yes. i mean and like, it's a big uh, responsibility as well exactly because the, it's you, the com it's one of the main communication of the artists aside of the music visual thing well that's that that's that's the way i describe it to people it's like um although i love music i'm like completely musically inept you know like i can't play guitar i can't do anything <laughs> thing. but but i have the chance with my job to do everything apart from the music awesome um but in the music industry so it's like even though like i can't make music or sing or anything like i still get to help musicians with every other part of the brand and you know the stuff that's important so um yeah no to answer your question it takes it's a big job to kind of like manage a whole brand and i think like 
there's no point in trying to think about that kind of stuff when you're first getting into the design industry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more about like just learning what you're good at, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Because like I said, like I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses. Yes. Um, as does my partner. And I think when we started the company, it was one of the first things because like we're best friends, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, and it was one of the first things that we figured out pretty quick. It's like, okay, you're really good at this. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at this, but like, don't try and do my job and I won't try and do yours. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like if I can help Lev and I'm not busy, I can offer him some concepts yes. towards logos. Yes. But like, um, I will always give them to him. And then if he doesn't like any of them, I'm like, I'm fine with that because okay. you're way better at this than I am. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like I'm always open to him offering like options for artwork or whatever. But at the end of the day, he also knows that that is like what I'm good at. Uh-huh. So we have, we have, and then we have a wider team where we have lots of people and freelancers that are super talented that we work with. And so, like, if there's something me and Lev can't do, like, we usually have someone we know that is really good mm-hmm. at that thing. And so, like, we're we're a big family, you know. What I mean, um, yeah. So it, it's it's about knowing your strengths and your limitations, yes. and not try not trying to overstretch. Uh-huh. You know? uh-huh. But um, like, um, I'm I'm thinking about some artists on the electronic music that I don't know. They just popped in my head now. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them is Marshmallow. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably you know something yeah. about him and Alan Walker. That mm-hmm. I think it's another one that I I enjoy a lot. The visuals mm-hmm. and yeah. like uh, Marshmallow, it's he's a he's a producer and a DJ that connects strongly with uh, teenagers and uh, childrens and because he he have that childish vibe and that mm-hmm. that f- Marshmallow face and with a smiley face and something like that. And in the other side, in the other, kind of in the other spectrum, Alan Walker is something a little bit more dark, and I think he connects a lot with people who enjoy movies like Blade Runner or um, movies like that, and he, or Inception. That's why he made a, a, a song with uh, Hans Zimmerman now. Uh, but they have really well... Um, really well designed designs like they have really a uh, strong concept and they know that they are doing this forever quote yeah. forever mm-hmm. but oh, what i'm what i'm 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 trying to 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 put here in words is how can an artist find that concept for himself like it's trier and error is like uh, doing yeah, something it, and... it, it, it is but like i think first of all the music you have to have like a musical identity, right? Mm-hmm. Be- because there's a lot of mu- like musical artists nowadays that like will do one song because it's trendy, yes. like in one in one style. Like they'll, uh-huh. they'll do a regg- reggaeton song, uh-huh. and then they'll do a next one is like an Afro beats. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they don't have any musical identity. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? So yes. it's like if you have a musical identity for, first and foremost, that's like. At the end of the day, they're musicians, right? They're mm-hmm. not they're not mm-hmm. visual artists, they're yes. musicians. They make yes. music. So the most important thing is the music always. Um, and I think when you have like a strong musical identity where like um, the best way to describe it I think is if I hear someone's like song and I haven't heard their new song, right? And their new song comes on Spotify or whatever, right? Um, but I know I was like that's a marshmallow song. Or mm-hmm. like Yes. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I used to say that, that a lot about Avicii. In the first 30 seconds of the song, you know it's Avicii. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So, like, when you have that, like, you're in a good place. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I think at that point, you're ready to develop your brand and um, visually and, you know. But I think before, I think a lot of artists, like, try and run before they can walk. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like, no, just try and find your voice. Um, you know, in an audio space and like mm-hmm. try and find a sound that works for you to the point where, like I said, like if people hear that sound, they're like, oh, that's a song by it, probably. Oh, that sounds mm-hmm. like, and then someone goes, well, actually it is their new song. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I thought it might be. Awesome. Because like you you, you recognize the, you know, like their, their style. And then I think once you have that, you can move on to like crafting and creating like, um, a visual brand and like you said those 
examples it's like avicii's team marshmallow's team like i don't know them personally mm -hmm. but like i know um that whoever is behind those teams is very fucking clever you know what i mean they're very good at what they <laughs> yes you, you know what i mean like i have yes. mad respect for whoever yes and the s same with the weekends the way like uh his team brought him from like this kind of like moody r&b singer to like a pop star mm -hmm. you know where you can listen to his songs with your family it's like the way his career has progressed mm -hmm. and everything that came with it is like it, it's they, it's a really well managed career you know yeah. what i mean yeah and uh, i always i always uh, respect and appreciate i can see when you know like artists have a good team around them and, yes uh, because i i do the same thing essentially mm -hmm. like we do we do the same thing mm -hmm. or at least try uh, at least try to so like when i see people doing it and like even like a piece of artwork i'm like oh that's definitely a millennium artwork you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. uh, because he keeps using the same artists and stuff yes. like that it's kind of like i i, I respect that and i like that mm -hmm. that's so true and uh i just finished graduating at berkeley and uh, in marketing in berkeley and they one thing that they like keep repeating all the time is that for a good marketing you have to have a cohesive sound like you have to to uh have a career coherent um uh single release like you cannot do like jazz and then rock and roll and then yeah. other stuff like that all over the place because yeah. you have to have a focus point for your marketing and that's what exactly what you were saying like you have to have your identity of your music first and then yeah. from your music identity if it's an identity that is more bright and more colorful you have a visual identity more bright and more colorful and exactly. if it's something like more dubstep like skrillex or something like that you can do more black and white and purple and dark stuff like that. exactly exactly so, and awesome. that's exactly how it works man like but it all comes from the music from yes. from my point from my point of view that's where it starts like at the end of the day we're just supporting the musicians mm -hmm. from my point of view you mm -hmm. know like we're not that important like mm -hmm. the main thing is the music so um mm -hmm. and then like how we can support yes helping know, helping to to bring the message of the music to the audience in mm -hmm. different spectrums and different different points of view that's mm -hmm. so yeah that's so cool 100%. yeah that's so cool and talking about music who have you been listening to recently that you are totally addicted uh let me check because like i i Uh, actually, the Japanese house. I'm not. It's, it's quite easy. Uh, there's a band called the Japanese House. Awesome. Um, really good. Um, and I think and Jack Harlow as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So like two completely contrasting. <laughs> like, artists, but, yeah. That's super yeah. cool. That that's a tip for people who are listening to this podcast to get to know those artists too. I'm gonna yeah, know those Japanese artists. Yeah, Japanese House are amazing. As soon as we turn off, I'm gonna go listen and watch like what people are listening around the world. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. I love it. Like every time like I hang out with my friends, it's always a big topic of conversation. You know? Awesome. It's like, uh, yeah, like um, I don't know about you guys, but like when I have friends around, there's always like people fighting to get on Spotify. It's like, all right, I'm gonna play the next song. <laughs> Uh, let I me mean, show you this song awesome that's super cool that's super cool and i think that is a great gift if somebody says to me come on man i need i think you need to listen to this one you're gonna like this one for me it's like oh, dude, a that. huge gift i love it i love it I love oh that. yeah yeah you'd love my friends then like you can't you can't, <laughs> you, can't, you, can't you can't get them off the pc i was like <laughs> like It's like, okay, I'm next, I'm next. I'm gonna play this. Uh, right, uh, no, you need to play this one. Then, Maybe right? Spotify should uh, should invite you guys for being curators of playlist. Oh, dude, I would smash it. Like, <laughs> I, I, I listen to a very wide range of music. Um, actually, I started um, with my one of my best friends. We started uh, a channel on YouTube, which was um, all about discovering music. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we were doing really well because like it was all about unknown eyes right mm -hmm. so um and then we would instead of putting them in like this is house music this is mm -hmm. ambient we categorize them with colors ah so, that's super cool so like classic. so if we had like a really hard like drum and bass or dubstep mm -hmm. song it would be like in the onyx playlist which is like dark playlist mm -hmm. and then like really calm wow. music we had like um um ambient music and all that kind of stuff was more like in the i can't remember like the snow playlist and then we had like a green one which is more like upbeat and mm -hmm. we had the gold gold one which is more like summery and then we had a like a, 
purple one, which is more based around like uh, like dubstep and that kind of uh, EDM. Awesome. Um, but the problem was that like so we we didn't monetize any of our videos. We we just put them up for free, mm-hmm. um, and then we would always tag the artists, you know, because it was all about mm-hmm. like getting people to discover these artists. Yes. And then and then a lot of the artists that we found earlier on um, ended up getting signed. Wow. Um, to labels, but then awesome. the labels kind of like sued us. Ah. But, yeah, and, I understand. Yeah, I completely understand for the rights. Yeah. For the copyrights yeah. and, ah, and that's like, awful. It's like, dude, A, we're not monetizing yeah. these videos, right? Uh, we're not making any money. And yeah. B, we're posting the links to the yeah, artists. Yeah, we are referring to the artists. They are oh. here. We are not receiving money I, that we should not have. And yeah, so I completely one, understand. There was one day we had one strike, right, on our mm. YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And then one day we got um, two strikes, like mm. back to back. And Almost. then it's and over. And then our, our channel yeah. got deleted. Ah, that sucks. That it's sucks. It's like a year, a year of work just yes. gone. Yes. Fuck. That and happened. We, yeah. we, we were on, like, we were starting to get, like, a lot of followers as uh-huh. well. Because, like, uh, people really enjoyed, like, our curation and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, so it was that's really frustrating because, yeah, like, we were, we were only trying to, like, promote. Yeah, I know. And it's ridiculous because the I, I'm like uh, cursing the industry right now because it's ridiculous because uh, my clients, since they are DJs, they play other artists' songs. And mm-hmm. since they are playing on the internet right now, they get striked all the yeah. time yeah. for copyrights. And like, they are, Diogo, help me. I got striked. My live video went down. I'm blocked. What do I do? And I was like, man, it is what it is, unfortunately. It's yeah. so messed up. Yeah, it's so my, messed up. My, my friends start doing that as well. Like, I have um, one of my friends, Neil, he's, like, signed to Ultra and spinning, you know uh-huh. what I mean? Like, yes. he's a big art and, you know, released songs on Diplo's label as well. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, but then during the lockdown period here in the UK, they start doing a thing every Friday called Steve French Radio. Uh-huh. And they would just do a live stream every Friday. And it was super fun, you know, they're playing. And then, like, you know, you're watching it, you're kind of, like, at home, like, you know, having a beer or whatever, like, mm. they're having a good time. And then suddenly, like, the stream just goes offline because they've been copyright striked for playing a song on yeah. a live stream. It's just so ridiculous, so they have to start up again. And yeah, it's because it's, some, sometimes maybe it's not the, the industry fault because it's the algorithm and stuff, and they don't know if, yeah. you're, if you're doing something illegal or not. But mm-hmm. I think they should warn you first, like, man this is gonna be blocked are you mm-hmm. monetizing or not and then you like can like say i'm not monetizing i'm just promoting the artist and they they will say okay no problem yeah but striking and putting it out like without it's warning bad, yeah. is like ridiculous I don't and especially you. on instagram you can't if you do instagram live you can't monetize that anyway yep. right so yeah. like what harm is there in kind of just promoting like i think it's music? kind of brand association you know because yeah. there is there is some there are some cases of some brands that they say ah you cannot put our brand near to blah 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 because yeah. it's gonna fuck our image so i think yeah. it's something like that because there are a few artists especially here in brazil i'm not calling names but there are a few artists here that if they play your song I wouldn't like that that they were playing my right. song, even if they were promoting, because they are like have bad names and bad reputation, and you don't want to associate yeah. your song with that artist. So I, maybe... I can understand. Yeah, I can understand that point of view for sure. Yeah, I think it revolves around that a little bit. I'm not sure, but who knows? Yeah, who but yeah, knows? definitely from our point of view, like we got, like we built that channel up over a year. And then literally in a day, because we had one strike and, you know, you have to like counter the strike yeah. and go back yeah. to YouTube and go yeah. like, look, we're not doing anything. Yeah. But then we had one and then like in the space of two hours, we got two more. Yeah. And then the channel was gone. There's yeah. no like, yeah, it's finished. I know it's happening with a, with a very famous YouTuber here in Brazil right now. He have mm-hmm. a channel with three and a half million subscribers and he had four strikes and something like that and the guy who strike the the channel is asking for money and wow it's I, like I, messed up ridiculous. yeah it's messed up it's messed up but yeah we can't do nothing about it but do you think about doing that on spotify sometime someday or no because oh Spot- dude if, if i i don't know like 
who would offer me the chance to do it, but I would love to do it. Like I, it's one of my favorite things is like introducing yeah, people to songs I'm listening to. It's always been one of my greatest passions. There are there are like uh, very 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 big uh, playlists that are made by people, not curator. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's kind of a, a pleasure mixed with a hobby. Maybe you can do a playlist here in Brazil. There are playlisters like normal people mm -hmm. playlisters that they have like really huge playlists and then they charge for to put your song on the playlist. So maybe it's a stream oh, really? of income. Yeah. That doesn't no, happen. Like, that doesn't like, happen I, in the I, UK. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it probably does. <laughs> um, but no, I, yeah, like even like without money, like I, I've always loved sharing music with people. You know what I mean? Like it's always yeah, been sure. one of my, even before I got into the music industry, um, to the design way it's like i would always share songs and you know it's always been one of my favorite things to do yeah. with people i think it, i i always found it was a good way to connect with people mm -hmm. because it, it's like you know even if someone you're speaking to like at a party isn't like the most uh vocal or anything like that mm -hmm. it's kind of like they can go over to spotify and put on a song and be like sick song you know what i mean yeah. like Uh -huh. I can't believe you know this song and straight yeah. away you connect with them like that. Yes. So, um, yes. Yeah, definitely. That happens um, a lot. That happens a lot, a lot. It's I, like I bet. there's this quote that uh, sometimes I don't know what to say, but I know a song that says exactly what I want to say. So 100 yeah. <laughs> yeah, percent. Yeah, that's exactly it. it. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I definitely like, uh, yeah, agree with that. And uh, just for, uh, I don't know, wrap it up a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I just would like to know if you like have something that you were looking now and you were saying mm, that's going to be a trend in a few in a few years or in a few months, like graphically and musically. What do you think? Where where do you think we are heading? Um, so the thing that we've kind of like I, I, I kind of touched on it earlier, like as a company is we found is that like I said, this COVID content, you know, the, you know, like shooting from home. Yes. You, you know what I mean? Like at the start, people are just doing the like standard Zoom call, like mm -hmm. I'm playing my guitar, I'm uh -huh. singing, whatever. Um, but I think like the longer it goes along, like people are like, oh shit, we can actually get creative with this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like um, we can, you know, like the stuff we did for iHeartRadio, a lot of people were like, wow, like, you know what I mean? Like it was like being at a mm -hmm. concert. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of artists now are starting to look at it like it doesn't just have to be a Zoom call with four people. Like mm -hmm. um, we did, we before we did the iHeartRadio stuff, we did uh, a new video for um, Global Citizen for Coldplay uh -huh. for the Paradise video. Uh -huh. And, you know, like Chris was in L.A. and like I think we had two of them here. One of them was like um, in like the countryside here in the UK. Uh -huh. But uh, we shot them all on like a green screen and mm -hmm. then we like cut them all together to make it look like they were playing. Uh -huh. And it's kind of like... If wow, you, that's super cool. Yeah, if you if you kind of like think outside the box, it's like it doesn't have to be boring like uh -huh. Zoom calls. And uh -huh. so I think more than anything, um, the longer this goes along, I think more and more artists if they're not already, should be starting to look at this and like, mm. you know, like we're going to have to produce this like live mm. from home content. So mm. like, why don't we do something creative with it? Yes. You know, rather, rather than just like sing down the camera. That's super cool. That's, there is an artist who is working with me right now. He's going to be super pumped when I say his name. His name is Peterson. And he made a, a live set from an air balloon. Like alone. Nice. In, yeah. Wow. It was like, Man, it got hyped here in Brazil, like a lot of yeah. media coverage. It was awesome. It was awesome. And something that just happened in my mind right now, and I don't know if you agree with it or, or not. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2019, when people were touring and do normal stuff, normal life, they were posting a lot on the Internet and like content all the time. Maybe now, because of the saturation of the Internet, It's time for you to slow down a little bit on the internet and do something that is really outstanding and really striking instead of putting content all the time. Do you think that maybe that's a valid idea? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm just behind that idea generally. Like, never mind COVID or anything like that. Uh -huh. like, but that's just the way, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, I see the world, like, 
I have friends who need to post uh, a picture every day on their feed, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And some of them do rely on it, you know, some of them are models, mm -hmm. so they do rely on their feed for, yes. for work and stuff, and so that's fair enough. Myself, like, I post my work, but, like, in terms of when I last post the picture myself, like, three years ago or something, mm -hmm. three, four years, right? So I, I, I view things the complete opposite way, and I definitely think that right now... Um, you've kind of seen the personalities of a lot artists a lot more mm -hmm. because like, because we've all been at home. Right. But yeah. then like some people have been like genuinely funny and posting mm -hmm. funny stuff from their house. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like I'm uh -huh. thinking of like the Shaq video when he's like DJing. On uh -huh. <laughs> it's post, amazing. Uh, you know yes. what I mean? It's like, it yeah. there is a, there is, there is a Facebook page with Shaq video with different songs. And I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, but again, that's like someone being creative, like uh -huh. during that period. But then you see some other artists, and you, you know, they're like, "Oh, this is really not interesting to watch uh -huh. at all." Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's kind of really shown like the ones that crave and not. But like, obviously, um, as people that look after brands like mm -hmm. myself and you know our company, like mm -hmm. we're constantly trying to think of ways to like if a, a record is going to come out or whatever mm -hmm. it's like um how can we advertise it in a more viral way mm -hmm. that people can interact with from their house and stuff mm -hmm. like that so i think it's kind of changing the landscape a bit of like how we think about releases and yes. viral viral content and all that awesome. kind of stuff yeah um, that's, so yeah definitely for us that's the way it's that's changed. a great way of thinking um with as well the quality over quantity that's yes, hundred percent. Awesome, that's super cool. Yeah. And I can agree more with you. Like, it's super. You're super, super right when you're saying that personality are showing up right now. Yeah. And the yeah. fakers are like showing up right now because here in Brazil, especially in the music industry, there are a lot of artists who pretend something that they are not, like taking pictures yeah. in front of private chats, but everybody knows that they are traveling in like commercial companies and. <laughs> now we are Easy, seeing yeah. who is real and who's not and do you yeah. think it's a good idea to document your reality like man this is my hustle this is my grind this is yeah, what i do man. Like, absolutely. instead Because, of pretending like, a lot of people a lot of people like can relate to you know like i think something that's been interesting is like a lot of the i think you know we had that thing where what she called um the Israeli actress did the Imagine video, which mm -hmm. kind of went viral for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. As, you know what I mean? Uh, um, so... I think I, did get I didn't get in touch with that. I, I, I think I do not know. All right. So uh, uh, it's the woman, uh, what's she called? The one that plays Wonder Woman. Um, uh, Gal Gadot? Yeah, Gal Gadot. Right. Awesome. So she did, uh, she did like a kind of, um, it's like, I know like life is tough, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, Let's do Imagine. So they did a cover of Imagine. Mm -hmm. And then you had all the celebrities. Ah, singing. okay. Yes, I know. I know. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I know. yeah I, it's, I, like, I... it's like, really, dude, you're singing Imagine and it's like, uh, you're, you're like housemaid and they're swimming pool <laughs> yeah. behind. It's like, yeah. you, you know, because they're trying to appear more like uh -huh. um, more in humble. touch with the people. We are yeah, in the yeah, same boat. Yeah, yeah. It's like, we're really not. It's yeah. Like you've got, I saw that got a lot. Of, you've got a yeah. boat on your swimming pool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. It's I different. saw uh, I saw a lot of that comments uh, about that in Nine Gag and Reddit. Like yeah, oh, no, it backfired massively. Yes. you know what I mean. Yes. So, but I but I think there's a lot of celebrities that have kind of like um, really embraced it. But it's it's also been kind of like interesting to see the ones that are losing their mind a bit, and they're like okay with you know it's kind of been like in in a weird like not not in a like a bad way, but like fascinating to watch like some celebrities slowly lose their minds you know mm. what i mean to know and that they go, are human like, go, too go, go, a bit, go a bit mad you know what i mean yes. it's like oh shit like they're really losing it like mm -hmm. um and i i have friends here in london um where it's happened the same where it's kind of like i've called them afterwards you know like on their social media i was like are you okay mm -hmm. it's like you're posting some weird shit you know mm -hmm. what i mean on 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 social media and Because mm. it's not something we were ever prepared for. No, we are not. You know, and so like different people have kind of adapted to it different ways. But yes. I definitely saw some people really struggling. Yes. But 
but uh, I saw that from watching their social media posts because I was mm. like, they wouldn't usually never post something like that, mm. but yeah. they did. Um, so, it's a yeah. mind game that social distancy. It's like yeah, you gotta be yeah. mentally tough to to get through yeah. days like this one. It's not easy. It's not easy. I, I'm I'm empath empath I, empathetic. I'm sorry if I'm saying yeah, that. Empathetic. To, yeah, yeah, yes, empathetic. Yeah, yes, to people who are struggling because it's not easy, especially if you live like in a small apartment alone. Like wow, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough. Like I, I, tough. I fortunately have this kind of. Um, yeah. <laughs> What's his name or her name? Uh, her name is Mia. But, Mia. Uh, but yeah, oh, if, she... if you uh, if you ever need any advice, you get 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 yourself a cat. Ah, uh, she's super cute. <laughs> yeah, she actually has more fans than I do now. So. <laughs> really? I saw yeah, I saw no. her on your in your uh, in your story Instagram. Never yeah, ending she... purr. Yeah, yeah, she, 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 she made me start an Instagram for her. <laughs> all my friends, all my friends, if I ever see any of them now, they're like, uh, "Okay, I'm coming over to see Mia." I was like, <laughs> okay. "I'm also, I'm also, I'm, here. I'm also here." <laughs> yeah, 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 but they just come in. They're like, "Mia," you know. What I mean, I was like, "Okay, well, I'll just sit here and <laughs> enjoy yourself." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just sit here and. Yeah, she she gets all the attention. Uh, maybe I'll do a podcast with Mia one day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She get lots of great content. Lots of great content. But she has she has a very small but very like um, aggressive fan base. You know, like all her all her fans like if I post something. She only has like a hundred and thirty eight followers. But uh -huh. if I if I post something on her story, I get like ten messages like I, I love you, Mia. You know what I mean? Like, like, Cats and you know, internet are, are a love dude, story. Honestly, Cats yeah, and yeah, internet yeah. is like a, a huge case of success. I don't know what is happening. It's strange, but cats and internet, they are the perfect mix. Yeah. <laughs> so, James, yeah. uh, I think we are like have a pretty great conversation. I'm, go I'm not going to take your time anymore. We are like extending more than one hour now. And I oh really, God. really appreciate what the tips that you give to us. So if you want to wrap it up and well, I don't know, maybe some tips or thoughts or something you want to say to the artists in general, I would really appreciate some last words from you for this podcast. Yeah, no, no. Uh, thanks for having me on, first of all. Um, it was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, really nice of you. Um, also, it's been really interesting, like um, speaking about a lot of this stuff because um, I did one interview during the lockdown for um, another like youtube podcast but like mm -hmm. i think we spoke for about 20 minutes okay so uh it's nice to do something like an hour long you know uh, that's like, super cool actually, yeah because you get to like actually like go get to a the little end bit deeper in your yeah yeah and go to the end yeah. of your thought process yeah. so uh that was really nice but uh now nah, man thanks for having me on and uh yeah uh, that, that, that's it really um, oh, man, i can't James. speak about any other work we've got going because you know yeah because it's classified yeah exactly so, awesome um, but we are looking forward when it comes to live and it would be great to 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 watch it comes to fruition and we know when we see everything like getting alive it would be it will be great it will be great thank so you, james man. thank you so much for having for having accepting my invitation for being in this podcast it means a lot and we have a lot of great information i think people will be like super 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 thankful for what you are saying and i hope one day have you here again to do another podcast maybe yeah, when, right, right. Anytime, may, honestly, when this material when this material go and we can see everything happening and maybe we can talk again about the thought process when you were building it and everything yeah man be right. i'd be glad to do it again anytime uh, that's awesome so thank you so much james and thank you man this is it i'm uh, gonna do how, how do you say goodbye in uh portuguese ah uh, awesome so in portuguese you can say If you can, if you want to say thank you to everybody, you say obrigado. Obrigado. Yes. And if you want to say goodbye and see you soon, is ciao, ciao, mm -hmm. até logo. Okay. So obrigado, ciao, ciao, até logo. Uh, awesome. Perfect. Perfect. That, that's as close as Yeah, <laughs> that's that's super. That's amazing. So thank you so much. I'm gonna do a, a little outro in Portuguese, and yeah, that's man. it. So, uh, pessoal, cara, eu espero que vocês tenham gostado muito do podcast até aqui. It was awesome to have James in our podcast, switching back and forth from English to Portuguese. And uh, 
Muito obrigado a todo mundo que ouviu. Espero que vocês tenham curtido pra caramba esse podcast, que foi uma experiência super foda. E marca todo mundo que precisa ouvir esse podcast e todo mundo que precisa acompanhar esse conteúdo. Valeu, pessoal!